guys oh my god i'm so bad at saying hi in these videos so embarrassing hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much today for choosing to tune in and video hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today and watching this video i am standing in a different place than i normally do because i'm going to do a little like introduction meet and greet of all of my rats this will be the third time i'm doing this as you guys know rats do not live very long i did originally used to have a group of boys now I have a group of girls uh two of which you guys haven't met i'm also going to be cleaning my rat cage i thought it would be a good opportunity to give you guys some updates on the cage the kind of interiors i'm doing let's just meet the rats i'm gonna introduce you guys to bambi first i'm also gonna put on this bonding pouch today just so that they're more comfortable with being held i can show you them properly and they if they want to they can just jump in the little pouch all right so this is bambi so she is my dumbo rex um, Dumbo means that her ears are on the side of her head instead of on the top. Rex just means that her fur is curly. But seeing as she's a rescue, you guys will probably notice there's a lot of fur missing here. Her and Badger both came from a rodent rescue in London. They were both rescued from the same place. As you can hear, she is sneezing coughing quite a lot. The person that they were rescued from basically kept them on sawdust and basically sawdust is very toxic for rats. That is why she's got her respiratory issues. That is why she's lost a lot of her fur as well. She also has kind of irritated eyes. I have had her and Badger both on a treatment of Batril. They've done the whole long-term course and still are not better. I think her breathing is just going to be like that forever to be honest. She's definitely not declining which is good. I think it's just kind of how it is. As you can see her skin is really really bad quality and she's a sneezy girl but she is honestly so cute oh baby sneezing as well as keeping them on sawdust they also kept like six rats in like a small hamster cage might have been able to see as well she does have like some scabbing and some scratches on her skin she does get bullied quite badly by the other rats that i have in here bottom of the pecking order which is why she has some scratches on her i have gone through the bonding process many many times i've also treated her for mites just in case the little irritation on her skin uh, could be from mites but it hasn't completely solved the problem other than that her personality she's a very very friendly sweet girl she is amazing despite being abused she has no fear of humans in any way shape or form she's very much a going inside clothes rat she really really likes to go inside my jumpers and my t-shirts a lot more than any other rat i've ever had to be honest which i do love i'm not going to lie she also has ruby eyes so she doesn't really have good eyesight she does this kind of head sway thing quite a lot i try and grab some footage of it just to try and map out like the shapes to try and clock where the shapes are she is just a sweetheart she is an absolute sweetheart. That's Bambi. So next up, I'm going to introduce you to Badger. These are the two Agouti girls that you guys have been introduced to already. This is Badger. She's a black and white hooded girl, Bambi's sister, and was rescued from the same place. So she also has a few health conditions. She does actually have a broken tail, the little nook in her tail here. She came like that. I have no information on how that happened. Even the rescue doesn't know how it happened. I'm assuming that their old owners just treated them really badly. They kept them in the... Still very athletic. Ooh, bad girl. She is a big chonker. She's almost as big as like the male rats I've had. I've had a lot of really big male rats, but girls are usually smaller, but she is definitely a chonker. Her fur is in a much better condition than Bambi's. In fact, her fur is actually like really silky, silky soft and amazing. But I'm pretty sure that she has had babies because she is quite baggy downstairs as in like her whole belly and like the back under her tail is like really really baggy and um i've had many rats over many years at this point and um i've never seen that kind of baggy skin so i'm pretty sure that she's been used as a breeder and of course i don't know if the broken tail would have anything to do with that she also has the respiratory uh issues that bambi also has as i said both her and bambi were kept on batrol basically an antibiotic badger actually seems to have completely recovered from that she's a lot more timid a kind of more 
peaceful, chill girl. She just, she is very, very affectionate actually. Some rats are like this and some rats are not. I can tell that when I stroke her, she kind of stops and like buries her head down a little bit. But she's just a little bit more of a, a calm, thoughtful kind of, kind of bean. But I do love her very much. She is a chunky, chunky, baggy girl. <laughs> this is Badger, everyone. <laughs> Next up are my two Agouti girls, which if you guys want to watch the video where I rescued them, you can. The link will be up here. They're called Hazel and Clover. There is a really big part of me that thinks that they are actually wild. Maybe their parents were wild rats. It's not just the fact that they're brown. This is Hazel, for example. They behave very differently to all other fancy rats that I've owned. They're a lot faster. They're a lot more escaping. They're a lot more orientated around food. They're way less lazy. So different to any other rat that I've ever owned. Their health is also really, really good. I do have a feeling that they were potentially wild rats, which is amazing. If they are, that is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, this is Hazel. She is also a rescue. She wasn't rescued from like a bad situation in the same way that the other girls were. I think they were just breeding too many and it got a bit out of control. So they surrendered some to the sanctuary. And then obviously that's how I got them. For potentially being a wild born rat, she's very, very tame. Let me put her back. Next up is probably Queen Bee of the pack. This here is Clover. She is the one that beats up Bambi most of the time. She is definitely the alpha, the most food orientated, the most confident, the one that beats up the other rats. The most friendliest with me. We are like best friends, two peas in a pod. We have such a cute relationship. She is just one of the most confident rats like ever. She's the only one who's ever escaped. She is an insane escape artist. She has escaped twice. It took me about an hour to find her and it was a really, really difficult process. I can tell that she is very, very intelligent. She has this kind of like um, intention behind her that in some ways other rats don't have. She's very like on a mission kind of vibes. Very, very smart girl. Not someone to be messed with. This is Clover, everyone. Mm. All right, so those are my rats. So this is them in the cage. And to be honest, the layout of my cage hasn't really changed that much. Obviously it's time to be cleaned at the minute. But I'd say something that was significant about the way that I do my cage is that it's kind of a combination of fleece and bedding. On the floor, I just use this, which actually works really well. Cardboard bedding with straw mixed into it. I'll either use that or if they're deciding for some reason they're putting a lot in there, I'll just put litter in there, depending on what they do I either use a litter tray or these baskets or both uh, for their litter. The layout is very active, you know, I just have a lot of like climbing things, random baskets, places they can go, things like this, obviously Sputnik, all of that. But yeah, I'm just about to clean it out. So if you guys want to stay tuned, I will show you guys how I do that. So obviously the first thing I start to do is I basically just take everything out. I shake out all of the blankets onto the floor. I empty out all of the litter trays. I remove all of the water and I put all of the like miscellaneous fleece and washable stuff in a wash bag. I did actually get this wash bag from Amazon and I can link it in the description. It is actually really good because it stops all of the random pet like poo and hair in the washing machine from mixing like with my normal washing when I use it. It just contains everything in the bag and then I empty out all of the bits in the bin that is from the wash in the bag. And yes, I am surprised every time at how much mess these little animals seem to accumulate over the week. Once I basically am just left with the shell of the cage, I like to remove it completely from its corner so that I can properly clean around the back because otherwise over a long period of time it will start to get quite gross. Then I basically just remove all of the straw and the cardboard bedding from the baskets, hoover everything up so that I can properly clean it with the wipes. The wipes that I use are basically the least toxic wipes I could possibly find. It's for babies and it's basically just water, uh, but it does do the job and it is pretty harmless for my rats. 
deal here is to basically just wipe everything in the cage all surfaces the random places i don't think of the bars as well you'd be surprised how much pee actually accumulates on the bars so i make sure i go around the whole cage wipe all the bars wipe underneath the bottom tray as well if need be i will remove certain wooden products and soak them but most of the time i would just wipe everything Once the cage is completely clean, I just proceed to basically put everything back, all the clean hammocks, clean fleece. I also will add the cardboard bedding, more nesting material, things like that. I'll basically just fill out the entire cage. Alright guys, so this is everything else that needs to go through. This is all like the random accessories. Even though I do have a whole basket that is a litter tray, I do use these two as well, just in the corners that they poo in the most. This is just a pea rock. I still, to this day, after like four or five years, have no idea if it works. But apparently rats like peeing on rock. I know for a fact they like peeing on plastic. So for example, they like to kick this out and just pee on that. Rock, plastic, same kind of thing. This is obviously just like, I attach it to the side. It's just fun enrichment. This Sputnik I do have just like attached to the top. This is like a broken one. I don't actually have the bottom in, but I just have it as like a hide on the bottom. They can't like sleep in it, but it provides like shelter. They also use this as a jump up to get to the rest of the cage. Cause I have a lot of enrichment on the rest of the cage. I do like the bottom floor to just have like a complete clear floor so that they can like walk and run on if you know what I mean but everywhere else in the cage they have loads of places to sleep and hide so I don't think they needed like a full hide on the bottom. Two toys that I put in the cage, pine cone, obviously you can use these from toilet roll tubes, they really like sort of ropey things like this. I also use some whimsies, whenever I get packages from Amazon specifically I keep the paper that is inside the package and I just rip it up and put it around the cage because they love to like use it as nesting and bedding so I have loads of this so I'm just gonna do that This is the cage, there's a hammock there, obviously litter tray, ladder going up to the Sputnik, hammock, whimsy chew in there. I did put a net in the middle here as well just for like, so that if anyone falls basically from anywhere they will be caught by this net. That Sputnik, rope, yeah. And then obviously once all of the hammocks and stuff is dry from the wash, then I will basically fill it out a little bit more. And then yeah, basically this is the reward for my hard work. I get to chill with my little babies on the sofa. This is where I free range them. I put this clearly a wrap blanket over the sofa just to protect it. Underneath the sofa there is actually a 
bed cover just for another layer of protection because as you can see there are clear holes in this blanket but yeah this is where I play with them and I socialize them I health check them I will clip their nails I will play little games with them I will feed them give them little snackies and yeah watch TV and just chill with my babies And then yeah, it will be dinner time, so I feed my rats on a wide variety of foods. They do have a dry mix that I make myself. Fresh food or tuna or eggs or things like that, but today it is a little bit of vegetables. Mm -hmm. 